A lot has been made of the writing style in Prince Harry's new book, Spare. I hold a degree in English, a journalism certification, and I'm a linguist who speaks five languages, and I'm still making my way through it and making notes for daily updates at the moment. But did Harry and his ghostwriter steal from the big Hollywood Sandra Bullock film, Miss Congeniality? And if so, it begs the question... Where else has he stolen from? I'm being a little facetious here, okay? But the tone of the book is so faux sincere, so mawkish and over the top, it is uneven. Many put that down to the rumours that the ghostwriter walked away from the project halfway through, and others say that Meghan completed it for him. When I first heard that, I thought a bit conspiratorial and unlikely, but then I thought if I had a new book out, I'd probably show it to my partner, and she'd have a slew of changes to make. So it is possible that Megan's had a little bit of influence on this, and that's just normal. So yeah, I'm sure her touch is present, particularly in the more flowery language and attempts at profundity. Now, the book opens in a misty graveyard as Harry ponders existential questions about the age of buildings and things. No, I'm not reviewing Harry Potter and that scene with Cedric Diggory in the cemetery, but it definitely feels like a children's book putting on airs. It's very superficial and moody angst-ridden teenagery. In terms of literature and movies and many types of art, we talk about suspending our disbelief and how integral that is to the enjoyment of the work. It's hard then going into a book knowing that it wasn't written by the person purporting to have written it. We talk about the royal we. This is a sort of royal I. And when we hear or read that I, in Harry's book, we're having to make ourselves forget that it's not really him. Because the truth isn't very fun. It's not great reading a book about the opinions and things of ghostwriter J.R. Murringer. Uh, We want to know what Harry actually thinks and what he remembered and what happened. So when we read this unnecessarily flowery prose, the trees were bare, but the air was soft. The sky was grey, but the tulips were popping. The light was pale, but the indigo lake threading through the gardens glowed. How beautiful it all is, I thought, and also how sad. We know Harry didn't think any of these things. The guy is not particularly smart or perceptive, that's just my opinion, but he certainly can't remember the colours and the blooms and things while waiting in a cemetery for an argument with his family. Now the intention of the writer is to lift the prose, right? So the idea is, okay, it might be a little harder to imagine that it's really Harry writing this, But there's a trade-off because the prose now is of a higher calibre. And now I'm getting on to Miss Congeniality, which is actually a very fun movie, and it's fine, and it's good, and I like Sandra Bullock, but it's far from highbrow and esoteric. And even if it were, you're about to see a clip of a character portrayed as superficial and unintelligent. My partner almost woke me up laughing in the night when she discovered this line, which she knew from the Sandra Bullock movie. And I want to use it to challenge the assertion that the style, whether it be Harry's, the ghostwriter's, or Meghan's, is actually intellectual despite its lofty ambition. I like what Shakespeare wrote, a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And a commenter on my page recently used the word grandiloquent to describe this fake profound style. I really like that word. I'll show this clip in a second, but do make sure to like and comment if you want more of this analysis and click through to the suggested video at the end for more of it as well. I've done a few videos now. So here's the line in Harry's book, Spare, that appears to have been stolen from Miss Congeniality. And it's in that scene that I referenced earlier, full of tulips were grey and the sky a shade of indigo. I've just made that up, but it's in that pretentious section. And here is the bit from Miss Congeniality, word for word, in all its faux profundity. The weather was quintessentially April. Not quite winter, not yet spring. I'd have to say April 25th, because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. (laughs) Then again, perhaps this is intentional, because if the ghostwriter really did want to capture the essence of Harry and Meghan, he could have chosen no better form than all style, no substance. And on that note, I think I'm going to rewatch Miss Congeniality.